because they're watching every, every move of every person on the property so that nobody could get out. All incoming mail and outgoing mail is read by security personnel. So if my mother were to write me a letter, it would be read by at least one security personnel before I would even get to it. If I wrote a letter to my mother, it would be read. I would have to, any mail that any staff member there mails out has to be sent unsealed so that it can be read by security and once they've read it and deemed it proper and no, no uh, sensitive information is being leaked through the letter or I'm not saying what's happening with me or that I'm unhappy or any non-optimum situation is written in the letter, if that's all okay, then the security guard themselves will seal it and then mail it. That's, that's all communication from all staff members. All staff are required to surrender their passports and visas once signing up and starting work at the international headquarters. So if I'm a European citizen and I'm working there and I decide to leave, even if I do leave, I can't go anywhere because I don't have my passport or I don't have my visa, I don't have any of my papers, and there's no way to get them. They're locked up in a safe. I have no access to them whatsoever. Most Sea Org members that are there don't even have passports or even driver's license. So even if they wanted to flee the country, they wouldn't be able to. Even if they had access to them, they wouldn't be able to. As well, all Sea Org members internationally are forbidden to have children. It is against the codes of a Sea Org to have children. If a female staff member, for some reason, um, was married and was um, got pregnant, then she's basically forced or convinced to have an abortion. If she refuses to have an abortion, then she will be offloaded from the sea organization and in most cases declared and she will not be able to speak to any of her family or friends that are Scientologists. During the 15 years that I worked for the Church of Scientology, my income averaged out to be 36 cents an hour. That's what I got paid for working there for 15 years, 36 cents an hour. Some years I got $1,000 for the entire year. That was my pay for working over 100 hours a week. I was paid $1,000 a year. When you get paid $1,000 a year and you want to leave, it's very hard because you don't have any money. If you had no money and you left, then you basically have to tell yourself, if I leave, I'm going to be a bum on the street because I have no family, I have no friends, I have no money, I have nothing, I have no possessions. So leaving in that situation, it makes it a very, very hard proposition for somebody there in that situation to deal with. Um, like I was saying earlier, most people that are working there, they don't have a car. So there's not really any reason to have a driver's license. You don't have any money, so there's not any real reason to have a bank account or a credit card or credit history. I don't know how it works here in, in uh, EU, but when I left in 2005 and they found out that here's this 33-year-old 30, guy and he doesn't even have a credit card, doesn't have any credit history, where have you been for 33 years? You, you don't even exist. You, you don't even have bad credit. You, you're, you don't exist. You're nobody. It makes it very hard to start a life, get a job, get an apartment, you know, buy a car. Staff that do manage to escape, after everything that I've just told you, staff that do manage to escape are hunted down like animals and recovered. If, if you leave and they find out you leave, every, every, morning, every, at, 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 every morning at breakfast, every noon, Every dinner time and at the end of the night, there's a roll call of all staff members. They account for every single person. If at any one of those intervals someone is not accounted for, they call a drill, uh, 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 basically um, a, a task force that gets sent out. They check all bus stations, all airports, all hotels, any means of transport or, or escape are all checked and, and gone through to find any of these people, a, a person who might have left. Scientology even has access to
to they have represent they have staff that are licensed representatives of the airlines not just a travel agent but like a licensed representative of the airline so if you were to leave and make it to the airport they can literally search the records of the airplane all the air the flights that are leaving the local airport and find out what seat you have and exactly where you're going so they can have somebody meet you at the other end or they can have somebody intercept you at, at when you're going to the airport once they do locate a person that's leave that's left they usually find somebody who that person is very good friends with and they basically get that person to convince you that you need to come back or they get your spouse your your wife or your or your mother or your father or whoever is there that there's a lot of people that work there that their children also have have now worked there or their best friend for the last 20 years has worked there and they get that person to convince you that you should come back and you shouldn't leave and I'm never gonna see you again and we're never gonna be able to talk and you're never gonna talk to your family If a person leaves and doesn't and refuses to come back and they can't convince them to come back, then they basically give you one final option and they tell you, if you leave, you will be declared a suppressive person. One of the rules that L. Ron Hubbard wrote about the International Headquarters of Scientology is that no matter what happens, if you leave and no longer work there, you will be declared a suppressive person, period. Mainly due to the sensitive and very compromising information that people learn while they're working there. If they were to leave for any reason and they were to speak with other Scientologists about what happens there and the goings-ons there, then they would lose members of the organization because people would, you know, obviously go, that's not, that can't be right, that can't be, that's just vi major violations of human rights. It, it can't be possible and they would have people leave Scientology. So basically, if you do leave, you are declared a suppressive person. Once you're declared a suppressive person, you can no longer speak with any of your family if they're involved in Scientology whatsoever. You